following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host for the show, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a great show lined up for you today. We'll talk about some economic indicators and talk a little bit about uh, the Federal Reserve and gold standard and some, some great topics. I'm glad that you joined us today. Uh, we welcome comments from our viewers and listeners on 94.1 FM WNBU as well as cable TV 10 and, of course, people that are either listening or viewing by streaming from our website, www.dlblaine.com. And you can also contact us uh, through our website, of course, the, the obligatory contact us uh, <laughs> tab up at the top, you'll see. And we also uh, still use regular phone. Our phone number is 252-633-0107. And, of course, the ubiquitous email, allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. We've got a lot of ways for you to get in contact with us, and we love to hear from, from people what, what you're thinking, your thoughts on the show, things that we cover uh, as well as uh, topics that you'd like to hear in the future. So I thought I'll start off today with uh, some economic indicators. You know, if you pick up a newspaper or turn on the TV, these pundits on TV are always talking about this indicator and that indicator is saying, you know, we're going into recession, we're not going into recession. Um, you know, unemployment up, unemployment down. You know, what does all this mean? Last uh, week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, we talked about some good indicators that uh, for use in looking at recessions. And today, I came across this um, uh, a couple more indicators that I think would be useful. And, and I wanted to talk about some that may not be quite so useful. And number one that is definitely overrated is the GDP. You always hear this quarterly measurement of GDP growth. That's for gross domestic product. It measures the amount of goods and services that are sold or transacted in an economy on a, on a quarterly basis. And of course, number one, it's backward looking, so it's telling you what happened, which is not necessarily a predictor of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, number two, of course, is that they always revise it. So they come out with this number and they say, oh, well, the GDP grew at 1% a month, and everybody, you know, panics or is elated, depending on, you know, the economy. And then very quietly, a month or so later, they, re, they re, uh, release the revised GDP numbers and they'll say, well, actually it wasn't 1%, it was a half percent or it was two or whatever. So it's, it's very um, backward looking and subject to a lot of revision. So GDP, it's great historical analysis, um, looking at, at where we've been, but not, you know, I wouldn't get overly excited about it. The number two one that you hear a lot about is the Consumer Confidence Index. And it's a monthly measure of um, economic conditions. And it's really a sentiment indicator. And, and I like sentiment indicators. They're very useful, uh, especially for short-term uh, reversion. When people get overly optimistic or overly pessimistic in the markets, you can see these short-term swings. But as a long-term indicator, looking at the health of the economy, it's not very good simply because it's extremely volatile that people, I mean, based on what's going on in the news, there's a lot of factors that go into it. And people just as a collective group, you know, wake up on the wrong side of the bed uh, certain months, so to speak. And so they just have this dour outlook sometimes and other times they get this very Pollyannish outlook. And so it's just very volatile, not very reliable. Um, the, the third one you may not have even heard of, if you haven't, don't you know, run out and go start looking at it. It's called the Durable Goods Order, and it's simply um, the value of all orders pay, placed with uh, manufacturers in the U.S. for, for hard goods. And it just um, has a low correlation to GDP, and so it's not really a good indicator. Um, well, there's three indicators that we think are not necessarily the best 
uh, to look at, of course, GDP, consumer confidence index, and durable good orders. And some indicators that we think are very good, I'm going to give you two. Um, number one is the Chicago Fed National Activity Index. And, and I know it's the Chicago Fed, but still, you know, if you can get past that um, and look at it, it actually is pretty decent. It aggregates about 85 different economic indicators, everything from unemployment to consumption to inventory. And it gives this gauge of, um, of you know, zero is neutral to plus, uh, you know, over one or negative. And it's very easy to read. Um, it's, not, it's a simple number. Just think zero is neutral. If it's on the plus side, economy is growing. If it's on the negative side, the economy is not. And it's very strongly correlated to GDP. And so it, it can be um, a decent indicator to see kind of where GDP is going in the future. Now, one of the things I'll throw in here, just so you don't get sidetracked, is as you look across the world, across history, different countries, different time periods, GDP growth is not necessarily coordinate, highly correlated with stock market growth. There's a little known fact, people tend to confuse high GDP growth with high stock market growth, and they're not correlated. And the simple reason is that typically investors pay too much for high GDP growth. Witness uh, China the past several years, their stock markets had an awful time. We're here in the U.S. We've been enjoying relatively robust stock market gains, although even though our economy is growing at a much slower pace than the Chinese economy. So don't confuse GDP growth with stock market growth, but, but we are talking here today about looking at, at GDP growth uh, mostly as a recession, you know, trying to determine if, if we're going into recession. So a good one, as I said, the Chicago Fed National Activity Index. Another really good one that, that I like is the purchaser, Purchase Managers Index. And it's a manufacturing index based on a survey of purchasing managers that takes into account production levels, uh, new orders for goods, um, supplier deliveries, uh, inventories, things like that. It's actual survey of human beings that work in the manufacturing that are seeing this order flow, they're seeing inventory levels and things, and it's a good reading uh, for either expansion or contraction of the economy. And it's good because it's just worked out to be a good predictor of GDP um, in the past. And by the way, there's also an international purchase managers index that gives you a good uh, reading on the health of the global economy. So just to kind of summarize, we're talking about some overrated indicators. GDP growth uh, itself is backward looking. The consumer confidence index, the durable good orders. Um, instead, we'd like you to look at the Chicago Fed National Activity Index as well as the Purchase Managers Index. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the Federal Reserve. I'm your host for All Things Money. We'll be right back after a few short messages.